Hello, my name is Benjamin Mel, and I am Regional Sales Manager and Applications Engineer for Gallagher Fluid Seals. This is part three of our video series on the basics of O-rings. Chapters one and two are available to watch on the Gallagher website as well as YouTube. Today we are going to delve deeper into how O-rings work by reviewing the most common types of O-ring applications, which include static, reciprocating, and rotary. Additionally, we are going to review some of the factors that influence how O-rings work and can cause them to fail. These include chemical compatibility, temperature, pressure, extrusion, and lubrication. An O-ring application is considered static if neither the O-ring nor the hardware are actively moving. Dynamic applications such as linear reciprocating and rotary will be reviewed next. In a truly static seal, the mating gland parts are not subject to relative movement except for small thermal expansion or separation by fluid pressure, as opposed to seals in which one of the gland parts has movement relative to the other. Most O-ring applications are static. Examples of static O-ring applications include a seal under a bolt head or rivet, a seal at a pipe or tubing connection, a seal under a cover plate, plug, or similar arrangement, or in general, the equivalent of a flat gasket. In a reciprocating seal, there is relative reciprocating motion along the shaft axis between the inner and outer elements. This motion tends to slide the O-ring or sealing surface at the O-ring back and forth with the reciprocal motion. Examples of a reciprocating seal would be a piston in a cylinder, a plunger entering a chamber or housing, and finally a hydraulic actuator with the piston rod anchored. In an oscillating seal, the inner or outer member of the seal assembly moves in an arc around the shaft axis relative to the other member. This motion tends to rotate one or the other member in relation to the O-ring. Where the arc of motion exceeds 360 degrees, as in multiple turns to operate a valve handle, the return arc in the opposite direction distinguishes the oscillating seal from a rotary seal. In a rotary seal, either the inner or outer member of the sealing elements turn around the shaft axis in one direction only. This applies when rotation is reversible but does not allow for starting and stopping after brief arcs of motion which is classified as an oscillating seal. Examples of a rotary seal include sealing a motor or engine shaft or a wheel on a fixed axle. The relationship between the dimensions of an O-ring groove and the O-ring itself should follow published design guidelines. Provided there is sufficient room in the hardware to accommodate the prescribed O-ring groove dimensions, there would be no reason not to. O-ring groove dimensions and their corresponding O-ring sizes are available for review and download from the Technical Resources section of the Gallagher website. In rare instances that would require deviating from the standard O-ring groove configuration, it is highly recommended that you enlist a Gallagher Applications Engineer to ensure the seal will work as desired. Compatibility between the O-ring and the fluid or fluids to be sealed must be the first consideration in the design process. If the fluid has an immediate adverse effect, for instance, chemical reaction resulting in surface destruction, loss of strength, degradation, or other marked change in physical properties that result in shortened seal life, there is little advantage to be gained by proceeding further with the design until this basic problem is resolved. If more than one fluid is involved, both the sequence of exposure and time of contact with the O-ring need to be considered. Operating temperature, or more properly, the range of system temperature, 
may require some minor modification of the gland design. Gland dimensions given in the static and dynamic seal design sections are calculated for the temperature ranges listed for standard compounds. If the operation is only to be at high temperatures, gland volume may need to be increased to compensate for thermal expansion of the O-ring. Conversely, for operation at a low temperature, a better seal may result by reducing the gland depth, thereby obtaining the proper squeeze on the contracted O-ring. For either high or low temperature seal designs, however, there must normally be sufficient squeeze to prevent leakage at room temperature. Such special designs for high and low temperature environments are seldom required. The minimum squeeze values for the various O-ring cross-section diameters given in the design charts of the static and dynamic seal design sections are generally satisfactory. Pressure has a bearing on O-ring seal design as it can affect the choice of elastomer hardness. At very low pressures, proper sealing may be more easily obtained with lower durometer hardness, such as 50 to 60 Shore A. With higher pressures, the combination of pressure and material hardness determine the maximum clearance that may safely be tolerated. Cyclic fluctuation of pressure can cause local extrusion of the O-ring, resulting in nibbling, particularly if peak system pressures are high enough to cause expansion of the cylinder wall. One remedy may be to stiffen the cylinder to limit the expansion so that the bore to piston clearance does not exceed a safe value. Extrusion of O-rings may also be prevented by using anti-extrusion devices known as backup rings. These are thin rings of much harder material fitted into the gland between the seal and the clearance gaps, which essentially provide zero clearance. They are available in hard elastomer compounds, leather, PTFE, nylon, and other similar materials. The exact point at which it becomes necessary to use anti-extrusion devices will depend on the pressure, type of elastomer being used, its shore hardness, the size of the clearance gap, and the degree of breathing of the metal parts which will be encountered. When using the data, include in the diametrical clearance any breathing or expansion of the cylinder bore that may be anticipated due to pressure. Although based on data obtained from O-rings, the 90 durometer curve can also be used as a guide for backup ring performance. Lubrication of O-ring seals is extremely important for installation and operation of dynamic seals as well as proper seating of static seals. The general rule for use of lubrication is the greatest benefit in using a lubricant is obtained during the initial installation of the O-ring. Lubricants are commonly used on O-rings and other elastomeric seals. Using a suitable grease or oil during assembly helps protect the O-ring from damage by abrasion, pinching, or cutting. It also helps to seat the O-ring properly, speeds up assembly operations, and makes automated assembly line procedures possible. An additional benefit is the protection that the lubricant provides as a surface film. Proper lubrication also helps protect some polymers from degradation from atmospheric elements such as ozone, and its presence helps extend the service life of any O-ring. A lubricant is almost essential in pneumatic applications requiring dynamic service. In vacuum applications, appropriate lubricants help reduce the overall leak rate by filling the microfine inclusions of the gland's metal surfaces and lowering permeation rates of the elastomer. Thank you for watching this video on common O-ring applications. Stay tuned for the next video where we will discuss O-ring profiles. See you next time.